Today you're going to learn how to create realistic looking clouds with Photoshop. So if you follow along with this tutorial, by the end of this video you'll have a shape just like this with some clouds going over the circle and underneath the circle. So if you like these types of videos, make sure you hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do because I come out with videos like this daily. So let's get started. So let's open up Photoshop and go to File, New and make the width 1920 by 1080 pixels and make sure the resolution is on 72 pixels per inch and the color mode is on RGB and then click on create so here's our document so the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, put in a gray background so I just want like a just a light gray just about there and let's go into the layers panel so if you don't see this layers panel just go to windows and click on layers right here and let's create a new layer by clicking on this new layer icon and let's double click on that layer to rename it to gray. There we go. So let's choose the paint bucket tool and I'm just going to click and there's our gray background. Next, let's choose another layer and I'm going to call this one uh, clouds or I'm just going to call this one sky. And let's choose the circular selection tool. So this is called the elliptical marquee tool, but I just call it the circular selection tool. So if you click and hold, you can see the rectangular selection tool and the elliptical marquee tool. So just click on that. And if you click and drag and press and hold shift at the same time, you can create a, a perfect circle. So make sure you hold shift because if you don't, then you'll just create an oval like this. So let's, let's just create a circle maybe about that size and let's just move this to the center. So that looks good. And I'll leave a link to this image in the description below. It's just some image of the sky. So just right click and copy this image. And let's go into Photoshop and click on edit, paste special and paste into. So don't go to paste, just go to paste special and paste into. So what that does is it will paste the image inside of the selection that we made, which is the circle. And then you can see the sky layer right here. So let's just rename the sky. And we don't need this layer anymore it's called sky so we can just drag and drop that into the uh, bin icon so there's two boxes here one is the actual image which is the sky image and the other one is the selection or the masking um, layer mask box so if you press and hold um, alt and then click on that layer mask box you can see what's revealed and what's hidden uh, 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 on that image so anything that's white is revealed and anything that's black is hidden so if I press and hold uh, the old key again and click back on the layer mask box, you can see what's hidden and what's um, revealed. So if you click the move tool and choose the image right here, you can actually move the image exactly where, where you want it to be. So I want the image to be just there and you can even flip it around if you want it as well. So you can kind of play around with all the different angles, but I'm just going to keep it at the normal size that we had just about there. So just place it just right. So I want to see some of those clouds on the right as well. And let's hit enter there. So now I want to add a shadow to the circle. So to do that, we're going to create an extra copy of this uh, circ the sky layer. So to create an extra copy, just click and drag this into the new layer icon. And now there's two extra copies. So let's rename this bottom one to shadow and the top one to just sky. So choose the shadow layer and go to the layer at the top, the layer menu and go to layer style and then click on drop shadow. So you should be able to see a shadow on the bottom right here and you can increase and decrease the shadow op opacity. And you can also play around with the distance of the shadow. So how far down does it go? And you can also play with the spread of the shadow and also the size of the shadow as well. So let's just get the shadow just right. So I think I want it to be I think that looks good just there. You can also play with the angle of the shadow as well. So it changes into different um, angles. So let's just hit, I'm just going to leave it at 90 degrees. Oops, no, 360 should be 90. And let's hit OK. And let's say you want to still keep edit, editing that uh, shadow. You can just uh, click double click right here. There's two extra lines under the shadow layer. Just double click on the drop shadow and then the uh, settings will open up again. So now I want to make it look like the clouds are kind of coming out of the circle, but still keep the shape of the circle there. So to do this, we need to download some uh, cloud brushes. So I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. It's a website called brusheasy.com. 
So this is a great website to find free uh, Photoshop brushes. So you can download any one of these brushes for free except for these ones here. The ones with this little premium icon, you have to pay for those ones. So we're just going to use the free ones here. So let's click on this one here. And you need to make a free account here to download these brushes as well. So once you make a free account, just click on free download. And then you'll just see an, uh, a five second ad pop up. And after the five seconds, it will start downloading a zip folder. So open up the zip folder and click on cloud brushes right here. So, or whatever the name of your the brush that you download, just double click on it. And there'll be a, um, a file called the ABR file. So just double click on that file and it will automatically install the brushes onto Photoshop. So I've already installed the brushes, so I'm not going to double click on it. So let's go back to Photoshop. And if you choose the paintbrush tool and click on this little folder icon here, this one window will come up and there'll be two tabs on this window, brush settings and brushes. So if you click on brushes, you'll notice two extra folders. So let me just close these folders here. So the normal folders that you, you should have are general brushes, dry media brushes or wet media brushes. These are the brushes that Photoshop comes with. And the ones that you download and install will be at the bottom. So these are the clouds one that we just uh, installed. So let's open this one up. And you can see all types of different clouds here. So let's click on one of them here. Let me just show you this as an example. So I'm not going to actually paint this in. So let me just move this to the side, create a new layer and choose the paintbrush tool and choose the white color. And if I just click anywhere, you can see it just adds a cloud. And if I, I can actually make this bigger as well and add a bigger cloud, and then you can choose a different shaped cloud and you can also add that one in there as well. So that's how easy it is to add clouds with Photoshop brushes. So let's delete that layer. And what I want to do is make it look like these clouds are kind of coming out of the circle. So to do that, I'm going to create an extra copy of the sky layer. So let's just drag and drop this into the new layer icon. And I like to keep an extra copy uh, just in ca case we make a mistake. We can just go back to the original copy. So let's just hide the original copy here by clicking on the eye icon. And let's go to the sky copy layer. So let's click on the layer mask box and what we're going to do is choose a white color to reveal and choose a random cloud shape here. So I think this one's pretty good. Let's just make it a little bit smaller and I'm just going to click around here. Watch what happens there. So I'm just going to click about three times. You can see it just kind of reveals this part of the cloud. And maybe you can also choose a different cloud now and you can maybe reveal this part here. Maybe make it a little bit bigger and reveal parts around here. So now we're kind of keeping the shape of the cloud uh, of the uh, circle, but kind of revealing clouds at the same time. So let's maybe choose another shape now, maybe this cloud here, and reveal a bit more around here. So that looks good. So now you can kind of see the clouds kind of just coming out of the circle. Now let's reveal a bit more around here. So to do that, I'm going to create another extra copy again. So this one, I'm going to edit the make the clouds come out of this side now. So let's choose a different shape. Maybe uh, let's maybe choose something like this. So if you don't see the shape of this cloud, so you can see the outline of the clouds there. If you don't see that outline, just press caps lock and you should be able to see it. So let's make this one a little bit smaller. Let's maybe put this one at the bottom right here. Yep. So that looks pretty good. So I just don't want to take away too much of the shapes around there. That looks pretty good, but I don't want this cloud to be blue. So you obviously don't want a blue cloud. So we can actually erase that later on, but uh, let's just leave it there for now and reveal a bit more clouds around here. So another thing we can do, let's just uh, move this to the side here. So to minimize this, just click on this little arrow icon here. So just move it to the side just right here. Cool. So to uh, another thing we could do is put some clouds behind the circle. So we can um, create an extra layer and let's just call this cloud one. And I'm going to choose a, a white color and make, let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's just add an extra cloud just right here. And you can also kind of move that cloud just in just right here, just in between it. And let's kind of get rid of that blue cloud there. So to do that, I'm just going to press and hold control and click on the layer mask box of the shadow layer. So that we have the selection, then I can just go back to this uh, sky copy layer and I can choose a black color to hide. And I'm just going to hide these little, whoops, 
let me just inverse. So what just happened there was, so it's not raising this um, cloud here, which which is what I want to raise. So right now what's selected is this circle, the inside of the circle. So we need to select everything else outside of it. So to do that, just go to select and click on inverse. So now everything outside of it is selected. So now you can just kind of hide those skies just around here. And kind of having that kind of light bluish colors around there, that actually gives it a nice cool effect. So I'm actually going to leave that there as well. And maybe for this layer as well, you can kind of hide some of these clouds here as well. So it's a bit too much around there. But at the same time, you can kind of keep a little bit of those blues around. So let's deselect all of that by pressing Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. So already we're kind of getting a really nice, cool looking effect. So let's just move this around here. Cool, that looks good. And so here's the shadow layer. What I want to do is also add some clouds behind that shadow as well. So let me just, I'm going to make that shadow a bit darker by just, um, by double clicking on it. And let's just increase the opacity of that shadow just a little bit. There we go. And let's add another shadow behind that, uh, add a cloud behind that shadow. So let's create a new layer behind that shadow. And I'm just going to call this cloud two. Let's open up the cloud, uh, the paintbrush menu here. Let's choose a different cloud this time. Let's maybe choose. So I'm just looking at the outlines of these clouds, see which ones the best one would be. Uh, I think maybe let's open up this one here. So I think that's pretty big, but we can make it a little bit, little bit smaller. So let's make this a bit smaller. And let's just add that just in there. Cool, I think that looks actually looks pretty good and we're still kind of keeping the shape of the clouds there as well. So I think that's enough for the background and let's um, also kind of lower the opacity of that cloud as well, just a little bit. Cool, that looks really good now. So let's just add one more cloud just behind the um, shadow as well. So let's just add one here and another one here. So that looks good. So it looks like a kind of like a sun just going over the clouds. So next we need to add in the text. So let's uh, choose the text uh, tool right here. And I'm just gonna click on the middle of the screen and just type in cloud. And this is gonna be all in caps as well. So you can't really see it right now because we need to move it above all the layers. So the, here's the text layer, just click and drag this above all the other layers. So let's highlight this and make this bold. So you can use any font that you want. I'm using this font called uh, Roboto, um, but you can use any of the other fonts here as well. Let's choose that and let's choose uh, bold and I'm going to make this bigger as well. So we're not going to keep it at this color, we're actually going to make it a white color as well. So let's just move that just to the center right there and hit enter. And I'm going to highlight this and choose the color picker tool, choose white. And there we go. So next I want to make the text more visible. So we can make it more visible by adding a shadow. So choose the text layer and go to layer, layer style, and drop shadow. And just like before, you can play around with these settings um, to add different types of uh, shadows. So the first shadow that I want is just a big large shadow with a low opacity. So let's just lower the opacity. I think it's about just right there. Let's increase the distance a little bit more and also increase the size a little bit more. So already it's a bit more visible now. So let's click on OK. So before it was like this, now it's like this. So it's already a bit more visible, but we can still make it even better by adding a second shadow. So if you double click on the shadow, there's this little plus icon right here. So if you click on that plus icon, it adds the same exact shadow twice. But the second shadow, I actually want that to be a little bit smaller. So let's decrease the size of that second shadow and decrease the, the distance to maybe about there. Let's increase the opacity just slightly. So this needs to be like a really thin shadow just around the outside of the um, of the text. So that's good. I think it looks good just there. So that looks okay. So let's click on okay. So before it was like this. Now it's much more easy to read. Now I want to add a third shadow with an even thinner line just around these corners here. So that will, that will be the final shadow and it will also make it easier to read as well. So let's click on plus again. And let's make this one, I want to increase the opacity quite a bit on this one to maybe about 45% and decrease the size of it a little bit and just decrease the spread as well and decrease the distance. There we go. 
So let's increase it just about there. So you just need to play around with it for a bit just to get that right shadow on there. So let's cl click on OK. So that's perfect there. So now you can double click on any one of these shadows right here and you can keep playing around with those settings. So let's say you wanted the bigger shadow to be a little bit darker. You can just click on the last shadow there and you can increase the opacity on that just a little bit. And if you wanted the thinner uh, shadows to be a little bit lighter and you can just decrease the opacity on that just the right amount. So then click on OK. And you can play around with this as much as you want and just to get that exact right effect that you're looking for. So if you have any questions about any of the steps that we just took, um, you can comment down below and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do because I come out with videos like this daily. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps out this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.